What's crazy is that when you start to scale your sales and you start to move from marketing consultant to agency, all that that is, is more appointment setters and more closers. That's it. That's it. That's it, man. Yeah, there you go, bro. It's, and here's the crazy part. Uh, the cost of running ads is, uh, is way higher than the cost of running an outbound sales team. That's it, bro. Yo, if there's one thing that you would do right now, man, I'm telling you, it's hire more appointment setters. That's it. That is the key, bro. And you'd be so shocked. And here's the thing. You have to have a bulletproof script. You have to have good data too. Like you have to have a data miner who's like constantly importing new, you know, and leads and shit. You have to, you know, you have to have a good value proposition. You have to have good case studies, right? Like I'm saying outbound is not as simple as, oh, let me just cold call, right? Like if you... Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you also need to make sure that they're constantly doing well. So that means you need to host a daily call with all of your SDRs in the mornings and you have to be like, okay, well, you know, what's your call volume? Tracking their call volume, tracking their, you know, their their bookings. You have to add bonuses, right? Oh, you booked this. Okay, every Monday we do bonus day, right? Where whoever books the most calls for the clients, right? Like on every Monday we give them a, you know, a deal or, or sorry, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, promo. Right, some kind of uh, you know bonus that they that they get like fifty dollar bonus, and these SDRs, bro, fifty dollar bonus, bro, they're like, they're like, wow. Uh, Philippines, Barbados, and India. Yeah, yo, when it comes to SDRs, I'm like, I, I'm not. Philippines is strictly my service team. When it comes to salespeople, okay, you can find quality salespeople around the world, bro. Literally, you can, and uh, and and in fact, I have. I would say I have two SDRs that are Filipino, one from Barbados, and then three from uh, India, New Delhi. Uh, and that's it. And then we're hiring another one, uh, hopefully this week, because um, we just have this new closer joining the team. Um, but yeah, the biggest thing, man, is commission-only closers who work from home on Zoom. Okay? Okay. I know because you know they're very they their economy is less capitalism. It's more like social life like vibes. You know what I mean in Europe. So, now, now I'm here in a Canadian. He's based in Vancouver, but he's a remote commission-only Perfect. That's what you need, man. And you know what? Make sure you're uh, you're like obviously protected. You're geared up with agreements because these commission sometimes these commission-only closers they work at multiple agencies. So like uh, so, like just be careful. You know, like make sure there's confidentiality, non-competes, all those things that they're signing because uh, commission-only. It's like the unless you have a really good commission only program where like you have a sales superstar who's like and he's on commission only and he's making lots of money you know what i mean uh then the motivation for the closers is going to be low right so you have to have a good commission only program uh uh it, like leads provided like and also make sure that your SDRs confirm their appointments the morning of Okay. So th th that's genius. Yeah, man. I really like what, everything you're saying. So in, uh, initially, what I actually did is I hired a setter with no closing experience and got him to set for me for like the past month and he's been doing well. Now I'm making him a closer so that this will kind of be like his first closing gig. But I have like like sample videos, scripts, all of that. So Yo, just... make sure you record your live sales. If you want to... Okay, look, I'm going to tell you something right now. I've, I'm in this position where I've built like... Uh, like a cr like my sales program now it's absolutely scalable it's insane what i've built bro like yo first of all your your uh your closers need a script okay that's the one thing i used to go wrong i used to never i used to never have a script for my closers i used to i used to have just live recorded sales calls from myself right with the slide deck and like each slide what to say in the speaker notes what to say on each slide that's how i had it before but that's not how to do it you need a legit sales script and then that sales script needs to be tied to a legit slide deck. And then that slide deck needs to be attached to, you need, you need a bunch of recorded closes. So like actual recorded closes. Okay. You need, bro, record all your closes. Okay. That's the number one thing. Build a list of recorded closes. Okay. 
And then what you're going to do is over time, this list is going to come very handy. Okay. And ask your sales rep too, the closer who you have now, ask him any, every single call you do, you're going to record it. And all of your closes are going to be put into this one Google doc. And you're going to make this massive Google doc. Okay. With your closes, his closes, anyone who closes at Vroom media, it goes there. Okay. Now here's the crazy part. Once you have SDRs, once you have closers, okay, you can actually make a teachable course. Okay. Like an, like using, it doesn't have to be teachable. You can, you can use any LMS you want. Like, but, but the idea is this, you're going to have a course online. That's for your closers only. Sorry for your like sales team, bro. Imagine this. You have PandaDoc. Yeah, okay. I, I haven't got it yet. I haven't. Okay. So I use PandaDoc for everything. Okay. But anyways, look PandaDoc. Okay. I have hiring agreements in PandaDoc for my SDRs. I have one hiring agreement for SDR and I have one hiring agreement for closer. Okay. And then I have zaps set up so that when those documents get completed, right? So let's just say the closer on boards, I have a zap that sets up that sends them the training via teachable. Okay. And, and the closer has his, has literally bro inside the teachable, like uh like training thing. It literally shows, okay, like $500,000 in closed deals recorded. Boom. They first thing they watch. Second thing, slide deck, review the slide deck. Make sure you know the slide deck in and out. You can't fuck up on the slide deck. Okay. Boom. That's there. Third thing, sales script, learn the sales script in and out. Right. Boom. Fourth thing, you know, like it just goes through, like it has training videos, bro. I'm telling you, man. And here's the thing in order to get to that point where you actually have everything automated like that, because here's the thing. Teachable also has quizzes like the LMS tools. They have quizzes at the end of the course. So you can literally have a situation where they get an automatic training. They have to do it and they have to score above 80% on the quiz that, ha- that comes after in order to book in the, the, the demo call with Alan. Right? So, and then after they, and so after they get an 80% on the quiz, they have to schedule a call with you and they have to close you on the phone, right? On a demo, they have to close you. Right. And that's, if it's a closer, if it's an SDR, they have to cold call you right unexpectedly. And, and they have to book an appointment with you, right? It's crazy, bro. I'm telling you, yo, I'm telling you, if you could just start collecting case studies, start collecting recorded closes, start making your sales script fire and start, uh, and, and looking to see what, like what kind of training your team actually needs, like slide deck, this, that, like, like map it all out into a course, bro. I'm telling you, you can stack five SDRs, bro, for 150 bucks a month. You can stack like four closers for free. Okay. And you just boom, bro. Like you, like no ad spend, like under a thousand dollars, bro. Like a month added to your business under a thousand dollars. Okay. In cost to get these SDRs. And that's it. That's it. Nothing else will cost you money. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, uh, in my, in the, in the deal flow blueprint, the course that I have, uh, you're actually enrolled in it. Uh, go take a look. There's actually a section for cold calling and I actually put my exact script in there. The exact script that I'm using every day with my SDRs that's crushing. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's actually like, you can change it by niche too. So like it's, it's interchangeable. Like I, right there, the one I have in there is for mortgage, uh, brokers, I believe. But you can make, you can change it for accountants, change it for home renovation, change it for insurance, man. Like, it, bro, it's a fucking winning script, okay? I, you know how I, and you know what's crazy? That script, bro, I literally made it myself. You know how I made it? I sat down, bro. I sat down with my best sales rep, okay? And me and him, like, we come from a very extensive sales experience. Like, I used to work door to door, like, he did door to door too. So, me and him sat down. We're like, okay right now because we were hiring sdrs and we didn't have like a standard script to give them we wrote some few scripts right but like we were just like okay look let's actually sit down for like just like 20 minutes and just make a bunch of cold calls right and so i made about six cold calls he made about six cold calls okay back to back i booked in about four appointments he booked in about three appointments okay uh and we were and i was listening to when he was booking and i was listening to when i was booking right and then we max and then we put all the shit that actually worked into one script okay you use that script, man. 
and you will see that outbound SDR is the most scalable like appointment setting and thing that you could do for any service business possible. Like it's it's crazy what's possible. You just have to have a proper system. Uh, and you know, if you, if you deliver the training and look, you're right to your point, right? You don't need a crazy teachable course to explain to these SDRs. Like, look, the SDR gets one course, right? The closer gets another course, right? And, and oftentimes I like to put SDR related material in the closers course too, so that he has like the closer has had a cold call, how to do this, right? Scripts on all that shit too. So, but the point is, is this, man, it doesn't need to be version one doesn't need to be version five. Does that make sense? So yeah. make a version now where it's like, look, he just gets the script. He just gets a video of you doing it, you know, like showcasing. Right. And then he gets like maybe one other thing, like intro to like your program and how it works. Right. So he gets an understanding of what he's selling. Right. In case someone asks him a question, like he's able to say, okay, yeah, he's able to answer some little questions. Right. And then he's able to book in the appointment with you or the closer or whatever it is. Right. But literally, man, I'm telling you the most low cost way to scale any service business is hiring offshore cold callers. Okay, so yeah, it's funny. It's funny, man. It's actually a really funny question because here's here's my biggest philosophy is this: they have to meet certain criteria, right? Like they have to meet, like they have to be obviously have decent English, like all that. It has to be like working English. Now, can they not have an accent? Of course, they can still have an accent. That's fine. Like I have people from New Delhi, you know, they have Indian accents, right? Like it's fine, right? Here's the thing. When it comes down to cold calling and SDRs, the KPIs are very like, don't be too selective about them up front. It's really just, you have three days probation to prove yourself that you're able to cold call these, these, these leads and you're able to book in appointments. I'm going to give you ample training, right? Like you give them the teachable training, you give them the script, you ask them to role play, you ask them to, Hey, first day on the job, you give them access to your CRM. You, you also pair them with one of your existing SDRs so that the, the existing SDR can train him. Right. And then also after the existing SDR trains them, then they come to you. Right. And then you train them, right. Makes them a superstar. And then they have 48 hours. Bottom line, if they can't book anything in 48 hours, they're, they're shit. They're not, they're not going to meet any, They're not going to uh, be of any value to you. Uh, because at the end of the day, man, it's, it's, it's a repetition job. Now, in terms of KPIs, you have to look at this call volume. Number one, how many calls are you making a day? Because call, when it comes to cold calling, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. So the reality is this, you have to have enough outbound outflows to get enough inbound inflows. Does that make sense? So, yeah. So cold, so call volumes and number one thing I always look at call volume. I'm like, look, if you're an SDR and you don't make at least a hundred calls a day, you are not productive and I do not want to work with you. Okay. So number one thing, that's just sales activity. That's not even like performance. That's just sales activity, right? Like SDRs minimum a hundred calls a day. Okay. Uh, second thing, minimum four to six appointments a day. That's what we hold ourselves accountable to with our SDRs. You know, we have a winning script. We have a, you know, a way of doing things, you know, and like, uh, at the end of the day, if you, if you also hold the bar too low, remember these guys are working eight hours a day, Alan, eight hours a day from 9am to 5pm your time. Okay. So you're telling me, Alan, that an eight hour shift, you can only book three appointments. That's shit. That's shit. Right. Right. So that so we have and i used to have minimum three that was my thing minimum three a day right but no not anymore it's minimum four to six okay and and look we also incentivize it every monday okay look you also need the right infrastructure too every day you need to have a daily call with the entire sales team closers sdrs everyone's on the call okay it doesn't matter every day one call no don't no one call you want the closers being friends with the sdrs trust me Trust me because the closers, if they like a specific SDR, they're going to like make sure they have a good relationship with that SDR because they're getting their appointments from that SDR. Correct. So you need to, ha you need to have a, that solid relation. You're going to see, you're going to build a culture and a cohesive team. If you start doing this every morning, you're going to have a daily sales call with the entire sales organization. That's the SDRs, the cold callers, anyone. Okay. And what you're going to do in that daily meeting is go over the stats, go over, you know, are you using, what are you using for your CRM? 
high level. Okay. Go over the outbound call volume, go over the outbound SMS, go over the outbound email, all the outbound activity. SDRs are held accountable to outbound activity. Okay. As well, go over the amount of appointments booked, right? Go over each appointment, right? Kanisha, how many appointments did you book today, right? Miri, how many appointments did you book today, right? Kevin, how many appointments did you book today, right? And then go over each appointment and bring up each appointment on the call, okay? And then and then ask each and then ask each person. Be like, look, let me ask you this. Uh, you know, uh, every single SDR, you ask them, what are your number one interested leads for today? Okay. And then they say, okay, the hottest leads for the, t- for today, the they're going to give you the closers are going to hear who are the hottest leads for the day based on the SDRs, right? Like best, most interested leads on the calendar for today, for each SDR, each SDR goes one by one. Right. And then as well, the other thing they go over before they join the sale, the daily sales call, because, and you look, I have my daily sales call every day at 10 45 AM. It's a little late. The reason why we do it late is because we have a lot of shit we do before the call, such as cold call the appointments for the day and confirm the appointments for the day, right? So each SDR is gonna cold is gonna call all the appointments that are on the calendar for that day prior to the daily sales meeting, okay? And they're gonna make sure they're gonna confirm all the appointments. Hey, you have an appointment booked today with Ryan at 2 p.m. Are you still gonna show up, Nancy? Right? And then you know they reiterate the program, all the shit. They say look at the testimonials, you know, before, right? They get them warmed up before the call. Now, here's the thing: there's gonna be some people that reschedule. Okay, before the meeting, before the daily sales call. And the SDR is responsible for rescheduling that call, right? Now, they reschedule it on the spot. They don't wait. They reschedule on the spot. Okay, you can't do today a Nancy at 2 p.m. still with Ryan. Okay, great house tomorrow at 3 p.m., right? All that morning. They just rebook it, right? Say, uh, the, anyone who cancels, because sometimes SDRs will call and the person will say, oh, I'm not interested anymore. Cancel me, right? I'm, take me off your list, right? Anyone who cancels, take them off the calendar. They should not be on the calendar that day if they did not confirm their appointment, okay? And then some people are not going to answer, because they're not going to pick up the phone in the morning. Fair enough. Leave them on the calendar. It's a hit or miss, right? But we've seen a tremendous increase in our sales since we've added more power to the SDRs. Okay. They have to confirm all their appointments. It's not the closer's job. It's not the closer's job to confirm the appointments. The, the, the prospect has not even met the closer yet. They have not even met yet. So why would Ryan or why would any closer confirm an appointment when they don't even know each other yet? The connection has been with Kanisha and the person or the connection has been with Submit and the person, right? It's it's the SDR that created that connection. So the SDR must confirm the appointment, right? So And, and so we do that every day. Now, every Monday on the daily sales call on Monday, we do bonus day, okay? Now, bonus day is all about last week's statistics, Okay. So who had the highest call volume last week? Boom. $50 bonus, right? From SDR, SDR, right? And remember SDR, they're getting 150 bucks a month, buddy. Okay. US as their base, right? So trust me when they get a $25 USD or a $50 USD bonus, trust me, they're going to love you, buddy. Okay. 150 bucks a month base plus 5% commission on the deal. And trust me when we close a $5,000 deal, right? Like they're like 0.05 times $5,000. You're looking at, you know, 250 bucks US added, which is literally double their base, right? It's like my SDRs, bro, love my company. I'm going to tell you that right now. I treat my SDRs as if they're like closers, like in Toronto. You know what I mean? Like they're so highly regarded. They love the job, man. Like we have bonus day. It's a great culture. Like you know, we spin the wheel, right? When, you know, shit closes, right? So I'm telling you, man, you could have a remote sales team, a remote call center meets remote closers all from Zoom every day. And you could have the most efficient, low overhead. You're not paying for an office. You're not paying for uh, 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 base salaries. It's all commission. It's all commission on the closers, okay? And what's crazy is that it makes sense, right? Because the closer is not cold calling. The expectation for the closer is not to prospect, you know? That's what I learned, bro. So when I hired this other closer guy before, he was uh, booking appointments and there were no shows and he got frustrated and I was like, fuck, I have to streamline this process. So right now, I was the closer. My appointment center was the appointment center with the intention to make him a closer and he only worked with me for a month. So now this is going to be his first week on sales calls. But now I'm thinking... Right now, it's a hybrid. He's both the center and the closer because he's only used the setting. I want him to be still remote. Do I hire an SDR?
I have the SDR maybe be an appointment setter and then eventually do cold calling? Or do I hire right now like a stay-at-home mom? There, there's a website. I don't know if you heard about it. I can tell you. What is it? I hire stay-at-home moms. It's oh, like, nice. Uh, hire my mom. Hiremymom.com. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. HireMyMom.com. That's a really good idea, actually. So I'm starting thinking is maybe as an appointment center, I hire this stay-at-home mom. And then as an SDR, I, I go to whatever you're saying. Maybe I go to... Um, yeah, that's the website. SDRs got to be... Uh, they got to be low-cost, man, in order for it to make sense financially. I know. Because here's the thing. You got to... Like, like, look, if you're... And remember, you need data miners, too. You need data miners as well because you, you want to have data miners constantly building lists, okay? That are like, for example, like I'll show you, like, for example, we're building like a home renovation list right now. Um, this is like one of the lists, right? So like we have an SDR going on Homestars, you know, literally cross-referencing LinkedIn and Homestars to find the name uh, owners of the companies, uh, of these home renovation companies and building these like larger lists, right? And then I'm having my SDRs, sorry, not my SDRs, my data miners. So see how this guy's name's Eliezer? So Eliezer's job, man, is to actually not only build a list from Homestars and whatnot, but then like export the leads as CSV and import into my CRM so that I don't have to do anything, right? And then, and you see, and you, exactly. And you see, and you see these little yellow lines, that's the last import he made, right? So if we go like, like, see, like, look, so like, this is the last import he made. So from here, right to here. He still has not imported, right? So here's my here's here's what I need to tell you. So bottom line is this: your data miners, okay, don't hire too many SDRs so that the data there's not enough data to call, right? Because here's the thing: you're asking all these people to call a hundred times a day, correct? The SDRs, yeah. Okay, if your data miners are not building at least two, three, four hundred, five hundred new contacts in the CRM per day then how are your data miners going to hit, you know, 100 new calls a day, right? So... Uh, Avi, I have a different system. I just use a tool. Like, like one tool is D7. Yeah, I know those, man. The, I use those tools too. Like, I, I used to use those tools, man. Look, I have never seen better quality. And remember, we do outbound sales, like, better than anyone I know, okay? Because the amount that we're spending on our sales team is nothing, Okay, relative to what these large, large scale organizations are doing. We pay nothing in terms of overhead for our sales team and we're doing it so right. And I'm telling you, it's all about lists too. You can't have like, cause, cause here's the thing. We're also cold emailing these people too. So you, you have to have clean lists, clean your list before. And look, you might use D7 lead finder and then clean the list after, you know, you might, uh, you know, clean it after and then, then upload it. Sure. That might work for you, you know, but there's never been. And this is, I've used these tools. I've used lead care, D7 lead finder. I've used scope leads. I've used all these tools, man. Uh, you know, Google maps, email extractor, like, you know, tons of these things. Let me tell you, all these people are hitting those lists. Like tons of people are hitting those lists. Oversaturated, Oversaturated buddy. You need to build data. If you want to do outbound sales properly, you need a list of data miners. You need at least one or two data miners. That's it. All the time, bro. All the time. I'm right now. Look, we sell to people that can benefit from more sales appointments. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy. The like me niching down. Do you know what that is? You know, the only thing that changes every time I niche down, I can niche down. I can niche. I can make a new niche tomorrow. You know, the reason why I'm able to do that. You only need two things to niche down. Okay. You need a good cold calling script specific to that niche. Right. So if I'm cold calling accountants, you, oh, you got it. And you already have the script because I already wrote it. Right. So you can just change it up. So there's that. Right. So you just need a good script and you just need case studies, relevant case studies. Right. So and look, you don't need to actually like like have an accountant case study to start cold calling accountants. Like if you actually have like a bulletproof accountant cold calling script, these SDRs, they sound like a pro on the phone, man, because they're they're like, hey, 
Hey, uh, John, you know, I, I uh, was taking a look at your LinkedIn profile, saw that you were an accountant based in Toronto. Here's the reality. What we do is we actually help accountants scale their practices by bringing them more bookkeeping, tax preparation, and blah, blah, blah clients in the next 30 days. Here's what I want to do. I want to put you on a call, 20 minutes, senior account executive. He's going to walk you through a whole program. He's going to show you exactly how we're scaling up accountants. Look, go to, go look at our testimonials. Go look at our Google reviews. Take a look at these things. You're not going to want to miss out on this, okay? Blah, 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 whatever, right? And they book the guy in, you know? And... It's because he mentioned bookkeeping, tax preparation, you know, uh, uh, like specific to accounting, okay, in the cold calling script, right? So when you do that, it's a it's an absolute weapon. It's a it's a it's a weapon of mass destruction, man. You can you can you can niche down any day. Right now, you're targeting insurance companies. You can absolutely change that any second just by switching your cold calling script and and your data miners and asking them to build separate lists. You know, like accountant lists as opposed to insurance lists, right? That's it. It's as simple as that, man. And then you get case studies. And like I showed you, the sales flywheel just continuously, continuously load. And that's why for me, I told myself I was not going to niche down. You know why? Because I want to build lots of case studies. Like right now I have insurance company case studies. I have accountant case studies, home renovation case studies, right? I have uh, 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 dentist case studies. I have uh, uh, a marketing agency case studies, right? So my... So now I'm in a position because I did that, that I have choices, man. And I also, I also don't need to niche down once I can, I can have like five niches I serve, you know? There's there's two ways you could you could vertically vertically integrate or horizontally integrate, exactly. right? And you know that, right? So I mean, the reality is like, look, you 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 have the option to like add a, added benefits. Maybe you're maybe maybe right now, Vroom Media is a media company that's targeting insurance companies, but maybe eventually it becomes this holistic insurance like like like. Uh, consulting firm where like you help them with marketing, you help them with sales, you help them with finance, you help them with raising capital, like, whatever, hiring, like it's this all-inclusive solution for this one niche, right? I don't, I don't think that's what I want to do. Fair enough, fair enough. Add more niches, stay to the same service, right? That's the other way where you could say like, hey, I'm still doing marketing only, but now I, I'm either adding additional marketing services for this niche or I'm saying, okay, look, let's add more niches, right? And then now your commission only sales reps, they just have to show the video testimonials on the call before they get into the pitch. So what I say with them is I'm like, look, because we have a show up sequence. We have like ads that go, we have like nurture emails, right? So like if someone books a call, they're getting a few emails about case studies and all these things. So they already review these things prior to the call. And then when they hop on the call, the sales rep forces them to watch this testimonial montage, right? And then at that point, they're like, oh my God, this just, it just works. Like they don't question it. Like at this point, they just want to hear about the program because they've seen the outcome of the program. Now they want to see, okay, like what's the specifics, right? And then the sales rep will take them into the specifics and, you know, kind of train them on, you know, whatever. Are they on the VSL on the call or before the call? Love that. Dude. So that's yeah, that's exactly it though, right? Like, so I have a VSL too on my website. Uh, m- like, I don't force people to watch that because a lot of people end up watching it. Like, anyways, it's like the main... What I do is I, I, I ask people to f- uh, watch my testimonial video. So I have, I have two VSLs, if you want to call them that, right? The first one's a real v- VSL where I'm talking about deal flow. I'm talking about my, my service. I'm saying, okay, look, you know, you guys, you know, Here's why you want it. It has testimonials in it. Like you said, it's all there. And then I have one where it's like, okay, because look, the VSL should be there to get them to book the appointment, right? Now, to get them from booked appointment to close should be just testimonial videos, in my opinion. You know, at least that's what I've seen to work like a, like a charm because it's like, like the video sales letter is usually, v- VSLs are there to get people to take a step, right? 
to like what's the next step that I need to take as a result of ingesting this content, right? Whether it's book a call, whether it's buy a course, whether it's blah blah blah, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like usually there's a VSL on a sales page. That's usually where a VSL is like stands, right? Because usually VSLs are you you need them to to get them to take the next step. Yeah. And so that's why we use VSLs to book the call, okay? Uh, and then we use uh, testimonial montage videos to to increase the quality of the call. Yeah, but you can't go wrong, man. Look, look, you can go both ways. If it's working for you, then yeah, bro. But like, look, yeah, I would say like, if you have like over 25 testimonials, then do testimonial montage. It works way better than a video VSL because look, like go on my, go on variancemarket.com slash testimonials, like, and just watch the video after the call, right? Like just go watch the video. You know what I mean? Like that, I don't need to say anything. I don't need a VSL. I don't even need to talk about my program at that point because I literally have over 25 people saying, look, within Z X amount of time, I got this result. Within X amount of time, I got this result. Then it goes to the next guy. Within X amount of time, I got this result. X amount of time, this result. There's no need. I don't need to explain the program. I have people explaining it for me in my testimonial montage. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yo, perfect place to be. That is the only objection you should ever have in your company. It's I can't afford the price. That's it. That's it. There should never ever be a case where someone doesn't believe in your quality of work. And there should never be a case where, bro, the only objection handling you should be teaching your, your sales reps is how to get them to buy based on the price. That's it. Like, no prospect should ever have a question of whether or not it should work. And if they do have that objection, that means you have a fundamental problem where you need to go back. You need to revamp your sales script. You need to revamp your uh, uh, sales process, your funnel, your emails. You need to increase your show rates. You need to, you know, uh, have VSLs, testimonials, right? Like all this shit needs to add up uh, and then you're going to start to reduce that. But you, if, you, if you're already not having those problems, then, then you're good, man. The, Nice man, nice man. And do you have uh like uh, are you uh uh what are you using to manage uh, all your VAs? Dude, I have like one of my biggest issues I would say as a business owner or as a freelancer whatever you want to call it is like I use Slack to have communications, but I haven't set up Monday or Asana. Absolutely get on that ASAP, bro. Get on monday.com, bro. I'm telling you. Like monday.com changed my entire business for sure. Without a doubt, you know, um, uh, definitely get on a project management software at this point. Like now you're using a high level. So it's like you have a platform for servicing clients, if that makes sense. But what you want is uh, you don't want to be the guy anymore, Alan. Like I'm saying past a certain point, if you actually truly want to scale, you need to start documenting everything. Okay. Project plans, you know, instruction manuals on every task, SOPs on every task. These things should all be built into monday.com. Okay. No, no, but here's the thing. It should be built into a, okay. So monday.com has these things called board templates, project templates. Okay. So let's just say you have a project template. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Let's just say what's your service called. Let's just say it's called Facebook ads, for example. Right? Like, you're selling Facebook ads off a Panda.com contract. If the Facebook ads Panda.com contract gets sold, here's what happens. Monday.com board from that template, uh, Facebook template gets created and it gets shared with the client, right? From Monday.com. And then the client receives this project plan off of the payment, right? Right off the payment, they get a notification from you saying, hey, please access your project plan here. And then I will look and please book your kickoff call here and please fill out the questionnaire here, like onboarding. I have that too. I have that too. I use GHL as well. And I have, uh, I have like, uh, I have an onboarding process as well. It triggers off the Panadoc payment, but here's the thing I'm telling you in order to scale, like really scale past. Remember, we're trying to get you from marketing consultant to agency, right? 
And, and the way to do that, man, I'm telling you, is to be m- more granular and detailed than you've ever been in your entire life. Yeah, you have to, bro, everything in here can't be in here anymore. It has to be no brainer, an instruction manual, video, loom video, how to do it, like everything. That's it. That's it, bro. That's it. And then scale your sales team. And that's it. Anytime, bro. I'm always here for you, bro. I'd like, yo, I want to see you successful, bro. You're going to be a good... Yeah, just carve out an hour a day for SOP building, an hour a day for, let's just say, like, uh, you know, project planning, like an hour a day for, let's just say, like, you know, restructuring, you know, adding some love to your sales team, right? Like, there's so many things that you can, you can carve out your day pretty efficiently, man. Like, it's just a matter of putting in the work, bro. And remember, always remember, it's it's time to become an agency, right? It's not, you don't want to be a marketing consultant for long. Like, and look, if you, and look, you can be, you can be a marketing consultant, like be a marketing consultant, get some solid case studies. Remember as a marketing consultant, you have to have good relationships with your, with your clients. Okay. And you can get lots of case studies when you're in that position. Okay. As a marketing consultant, less so when you're agency owner, actually, when you're agency owner, you actually have teammates that are dealing with your clients. So when the head of the agency reaches out, you can only reach out if the, if the results are good and the client's doing well, that's when you can reach out. But as market consultant, you pretty much have like a one-on-one relationship with each and every client that comes into your agency. So you're able to really, really build those relationships and, you know, scale up your case studies in when you're in that section. Okay. So, but yeah, bro, I, yo, I want to see you can scale it. Let's, let's see how it goes, man. And, uh, dude, it's a good session. Anytime, man. Any, anytime, man. I want to see uh, success and yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully you got value from that. So keep on keeping on. Okay, man. Cheers.